verse is Philippians 1 verse 6, which says, God began a good work in you, and I am sure that he will carry it on until it is complete. That will be on the day Christ Jesus returns. Before we get to today's activity, today's question is, do you believe that we should be sharing the good news of Jesus with others? Type your answers in the chat. Before we get into today's activity, I'm going to share with you today's fitness fact, which is, on average, a person walks 70,000 miles in their lifetime. So let's get into today's activity. Howdy, friends, and welcome back to Fishing with Charlie and Huck. I'm Charlie. And I'm Huck. A lot of you folks have been writing in to the show. Huck was really impressed to see all those cards and letters. We didn't think y'all could write. Y'all are some good questions too. Like the one I like like the one who asked, what kind of bait should we use when we go fishing for men? Fishing for men? That's right, Huck. Jesus called us to be fishers of men and to draw other people to Jesus. Oh, I got you. What do you think, Huck? You got any good tips for the folks on this one? Sure do. The secret to catching anything to use the right bait. If you want to catch people, there's just one bait. Pizza. Pizza? Sure, kids love pizza. Adults love pizza. That's not how you fish for men, Huck. It's not? Huck. Let's not go draw people to Jesus. Okay, okay. Well, I have another bait for catching people, and this is a good one. Better be good. Oh, it is. Let's see if I brought it with me here. What do you think? That's not going to work either. It would sure let me in. Huck, being a fisher of men means drawing people to Jesus. The best way to do that is by sharing the love of Jesus. Jesus loved us so much. He died for us. Is there anything more attractive you can put on a hook than that? No, sir. Can't think of any. But I don't think you can put love on a hook. Well, Hub, we don't really want to get these shark hooks in people. Yeah, it really hurts when you do that. I make time for what I want I choose my priorities Jesus, you're my number one I will make room for you to so you don't feel that you can live here I make time for what I want I choose my priorities Jesus, you're my number one Jesus, you're my number one
all the way back to civilization at dinner time to get to McDonald's. That just doesn't sound right, does it? Who on earth would want to go camping only to eat fast food for dinner? That kind of goes against the whole point of camping, doesn't it? Camping means getting away from the modern world. It means no TV, no internet and no fast food. It means taking life slowly and enjoying nature. Some people pack food for camping trips, like lunch meats and fruits and veggies. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but for other people, nothing says camping like catching and preparing your own food. One of the best ways to do that is by fishing. How many of you have ever gone fishing for your own dinner? Anyone? Fishing can be a feast or family plan. If you don't catch anything, you'll go hungry. But when you do, there's nothing more rewarding than eating something that you yourself caught and prepared in the wild. One of the most famous passages in the Bible has a little to do with fishing. Jesus went to a group of fishermen and told them he wanted them to be fishers of men. Today we're going to meet that group, Jesus' disciples. We're going to discover what Jesus meant by being fishers of men. And we're going to see whose job it is to continue the work the disciples began. See you in a moment. Hey there friends, my name is David. Sorry to disappoint, but I am not the King David you're probably thinking about. I am just an ordinary man named David. But I have witnessed some things that are way beyond ordinary. Let me explain. Peter, Andrew, James and John were common ordinary guys who went to work every day to catch fish. When they got up that one fateful morning, I doubt any one of them thought to themselves, I'm going to leave my job to go and follow some new guy around and be his disciple. Even when Jesus stepped into their boat and taught the crowd, I doubt that any of them knew what was about to happen. When the fishermen saw their net full of fish, Peter fell to his knees and asked Jesus to go away. It wasn't because he was ungrateful. It was because he knew Jesus had come from God. Jesus then told Peter he was not going away. Instead, he was going to make Peter a fisher of men. Jesus showed his love to Peter on that boat and Peter followed Jesus from that day forward. 
In that simple action, Jesus not only called Peter to be a fisher of men, he showed him how to do it with love. This has been me, Diana, your Brinks Kiss Bible Adventure News Correspondent. Until next time! Hi friends, my name is Christian and I work at Bricks Kids. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video and smash that notification button so you don't miss anything. Today on Bricks Kids, our focus is catching some fish. So now we're done with countdown to Easter, we've moved on to, drum roll please, happy campers. So we're going to spend the whole summer with God. Are you looking forward to that? Yes. I can't hear you. Yay! Now that's what I like to hear. Have you ever camped out before? in the great outdoors. I have once for a school trip, but I haven't gone fishing before. Telling stories and singing songs by the campfire. There are so many activities you can do. But have you ever fished before? Today's Bible text is taken from Philippians 1 verse 16 and it reads, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Our key passage for today is taken from Luke 5 verse 1 to 11. This is when Jesus met the first of his disciples. These were Jesus' special friends. He spent time getting to know them and teaching them about God's love. Jesus was talking when he stepped into Simon Peter's boat. They had been fishing all night and didn't catch anything. How do you think they felt? Type your answer in the chat below. When Jesus was finished speaking... He told Simon to throw the nets back out. Now he didn't think there was any point in that, but he did it anyway. And guess what? There was a whole net full of fish, so much that the boat almost sank. In fact, both boats almost sunk. Simon and his friends, James and John, were so surprised, but Simon fell to his knees and was and felt like he was unworthy. But Jesus told them in the future to fish for men. Right at that moment, they pulled up their boats and left everything behind, their job, their business, everything, and followed Jesus. To summarise, our objective is for kids to learn that we've been called to make sure people catch the good news of Jesus. In order to receive the good news, just say this simple prayer. Dear God, thank you for sharing the good news of Jesus with us. Teach us how we can share the good news with other people. In Jesus' name, Amen. The end. Thanks for watching and remember to share the good news of Jesus with other people. Goodbye. at home and
and abroad. I'm Angelina. Today I have Nemo with me. Fish are unique in their very own way. So are we. Fish have different ways of doing things. So do we. Today we will see the 10 most beautiful fish in my opinion. 10. Parrotfish. Parrotfishes are a group of around 90 fish species. They are considered a subfamily to the wrasses, which has around 95 species. This group's largest species is found in the Indo Pacific. They live in coral reefs, rocky coasts, and seagrass beds, and can play a significant role in breaking down of hard ocean structures. They get the name from their parrot like beak or in their mouth. They can live up to seven years. Nine, chitlids. Chitlids are an extremely diverse family of fishes, and they are found in the continent of Africa in rift lakes. There are over 500 species of chitlids in just three lakes: the Victoria Lake, Malawi Lake, and Tanganyika Lake. The largest species of chitlid can grow up to 90 centimetres or approximately 3 feet. Overall, there are around 1,700 chitlid species. They can sleep with their eyes open because they do not have eyelids. Chitlids are also very adaptable. They are being introduced to the lakes in Asia and America. Koi fish. Koi fish are found in the Black Caspian Aral Seas. They originated from Asia. Koi fish are so adaptable they can live all around the world. They were brought to Japan for food. Koi fish are omnivorous so they will eat just about anything you give them. There are 24 koi fish varieties. A koi fish can grow up to 91 centimetres in length. They can also live up to 100 years. 7. Angelfish Angelfish are one of the most popular aquarium fish and are members of the chitlid family. They can grow up to 10 inches and live up to 10 years. The original freshwater angelfish was a standard silver angelfish. However, there are more angelfish colours now, like marble, gold, zebra, leopards, half blacks, whites, veils, blues, blacks, and whites. Orandas. Orandas are one of the most popular types of goldfish. They have sweet, playful temperance and can live up to 25 years. Oranda goldfish come in pretty much all colours of the rainbow. They can grow up to 12 inches long. Orandas are omnivores and will eat just about anything. Like most other tropical fish, they do not get along well with other fish. Five, queen sugarfish. The queen sugarfish is one of the most iconic saltwater fish patrolling the Atlantic Ocean and can live up to 13 years. They can grow up to 24 inches. Queen triggers are carnivores and prefer to eat squid, krills and small clams. Their teeth keep growing and if they don't find something to wear it down on, they will grow very long and hurt. 4. Cardinal Fish The Bangai Cardinal Fish are a small tropical fish species found in the Bangai Islands in Indonesia and live up to 15 years. They can grow up to 8 centimeters in length. They have a silvery white body. The Bangai Cardinal Fish 
has a total population of 2.4 million. Despite this, it is considered an endangered species due to its small home range. They are omnivores and prefer to eat plankton and small crustaceans. 3. Mandarin fish Mandarin fish are also known by several other common names, including the mandarin dragonette, the mandarin goby, the green mandarin fish, the striped mandarin fish, and the psychedelic fish. These little beauties are a small species, only reaching about 3 inches in length, and can live up to 15 years in the wild. Mandarin fish are very picky eaters. They eat mainly small worms, protozoans, and small crustaceans. The mandarin fish is native to the Pacific, ranging approximately from the Ryukyu Islands south to Australia. It can usually be found in some of the warmer waters. 2. Discus fish Symphosodon, also known as discus, is a brightly coloured tropical fish and a member of the chitlid family. These fish are mainly found in the low waterways of the Amazon basin and can grow up to 23 centimetres. Because of their bright colours and detailed markings, the discus is one of the most popular tropical aquarium fish in the world and can live up to 15 years. And number one, the lionfish. That's my favourite. Lionfish, also called turkey fish or firefish, is one of the showy Indo-Pacific fishes of the scorpion fish family. They can live up to 15 years and grow up to 18 inches in length. Lionfish are noted for their venomous fin spines, which are capable of producing painful, though rarely fatal, puncture wounds. The fishes have enlarged pectoral fins and elongated dorsal fin spines and each species has a particular pattern of bold zebra-like stripes. When disturbed, the fish spread and display the fins and if further pressed, will present an attack with the dorsal spines. Thank you for tuning in to Culture at Home and Abroad with me and Nemo. Bye! Hi, my name is Jaden. I'm your health correspondent for 2022. This week we'll be learning about sweet potato. Interesting facts about sweet potato. Did you know that sweet potatoes are not actually related to potatoes? Health benefits of sweet potato. Help to treat cancer. Boost immune system. Provide relief from arthritis. Excellent facilitator for digestion, aid in curing stomach ulcers, maintain water balance in the body. Treats to make your sweet potatoes. You can make sweet potato muffins, sweet potato pizza and sweet potato roti. Today I'll be making sweet potato healthy pizza. The ingredients you will need for the base is 1 kilogram of sweet potatoes peeled and roughly chopped. 200 grams of oat flour, salt, and freshly ground black pepper. And for the sauce, you will need one tablespoon of olive oil, one onion finely chopped, four garlic cloves finely chopped, 800 grams of chopped tomatoes from a tin, the sauce, the sauce for the base and one teaspoon of sugar, honey or maple syrup. For the toppings, you will need 200 grams of vegan cheese or grated mozzarella style cheese, basil leaves or other toppings, one, tea one teaspoon of olive oil, one sweet pepper thinly sliced, extra virgin olive oil and one tablespoon of sweet corn. 
method. To make the pizza base, put the sweet potatoes in a large saucepan and cover it with water and bring to the boil. Cook until softened. Here's one I prepared earlier. Put the potatoes and place in a bowl. Put the sweet potatoes in a bowl with the oat flour. And mix until softened. Roll into a ball and flatten it into, into your pizza shape. Then spread spread the spread the tomato sauce on the base fully Then sprinkle some cheese some and some sweet corn and one tablespoon of sweet corn. And add some sweet pepper. And also add some salt and pepper. Then put the pizza in set the put the stove to two hundred which is gas mark six. Remove the pizza from the oven. Remove the pizza from the oven and season with salt and pepper and drizzle over some extra virgin olive oil and serve. Bon appetit! This is the finished product. I'm going to taste it. This tastes lovely and very enticing. I'm going to make this again. Thanks for listening and don't forget to join me for another episode of Vegetables.
of that wonderful place when I look for sanity. Please introduce yourself. I'm Angela Moore. I'm the head teacher at St. Anthony's Catholic Primary School. And I cannot begin to tell you how happy I am to be here with you this morning, Jaden. It's things like this, this kind of surprise that makes me so, so thrilled having a pupil of mine from year two who has come in to do this wonderful initiative in his holidays. So impressed. How do you keep the children healthy? Well, we try our best to ensure that we have a very strong PE program in the school. We make sure that the children have at least two break times to go out and play. We ensure that they get engaged in all sorts of games and activities. But we also make sure that our um, provision in terms of school meals is really broad and balanced and presents the children with a wide range of choices of foods so that they're getting their three G's. They're getting their go foods, which is the carbohydrates, the starches, the fats that gives them that energy, the grow foods, the proteins, the minerals, the vitamins, and the glow foods, the fruits and the vegetables that will help their skin and help them to just shine and be beautiful. So that's how we keep the children healthy. What is your favorite sport? My favorite sport? Well, my favorite sport is netball. I used to play netball both for my primary school and for my high school in Jamaica, as well as for my university and college. And I thoroughly enjoy netball. But truth be told, I love all sports. But netball is the one that I really and truly shun at. When you are stressed, how do you calm down? Mm, when I'm stressed. Being a head teacher is a very stressful job. And you have to find ways to calm down. If you notice, whenever I'm walking around the school, I'm always singing a song or humming a tune because that helps to keep me lovely and calm. But I also am always praying. Even when it doesn't look like I'm praying, I'm praying in my heart, I'm praying in my mind, and water calms me down. So I drink a lot of water. I also take a lovely bath or a shower with the water just doing its magic to help to calm me down when I get home in the evenings. What is your favorite vegetable and why? <laughs> my favorite vegetable? I think perhaps my favorite be vegetable is, uh, vegetable is Cabbage. I love cabbage. I love it shredded. I love it steamed. I love it cooked in any way. I love it in coleslaw. I love cabbage just seasoned and steamed on its own and eating it with rice or lovely Caribbean bread. I love to make sure that I mix cabbage in with all of my salads and so on. So I really do love cabbages. And when I was coming to um, England, because I came from Jamaica where we did not have access to things like Brussels sprouts. I thought Brussels sprouts were mini cabbages that would taste exactly like cabbages, but they don't. <laughs> and that was a great big surprise for me. So I actually don't love Brussels sprouts as much as I actually love cabbages themselves. Who taught you to cook? Oh, my mother was a fabulous cook. And right now, my daughter is a great cook. She's vegan, and she's a vegan chef. She has been featured on the television. Um, she came on a program with Jamie Oliver. Right now, she's also writing her own recipe book on lovely vegan ways of cooking fabulous foods that people love to eat. But she has a way of saying, I can vegan that. 
and um, my mother taught me to cook and so I taught her and my other children to cook. What is your favorite food? My favorite food? Ooh, that's a hard one. I love all sorts of food. Literally, I love food. As long as it can be eaten and it tastes nice, love food. But I particularly love Jamaican food. So my rice and peas and my curried goat and my oxtail and my red pea soup and my chicken soup with lots of pumpkin and spinners. I love Caribbean food, but particularly Jamaican food. When you were growing up, what career did you want to have? Funnily enough, from the age of seven, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I didn't know what kind of teacher or in what area I would teach, but I always knew I wanted to teach. And I started teaching at a really early age in church. I taught Sunday school to the babies class, which was children like your age, um, Jaden. And I started from there at the age of 12 and I continued to teach Sunday school right up to confirmation classes. And then when I graduated from um, university, I went into teaching full time. It was just a beautiful, beautiful career path for me and something that I've always enjoyed doing and still enjoy doing today. How can you improve your health? Wow, I definitely need to improve my health. I don't think I exercise enough. I think I do sit for too long doing lots of meetings and lots of work at a computer on a daily basis. So I definitely need to challenge myself to do a lot more exercise, to do a lot more walking, to do a lot more talking about how I can improve my um, health regime, to go and swim because I love being in water. So I, I definitely would need to do a lot more exercising. That's an area of challenge for me. What form of exercise do you like best? I love to walk. I love to walk and just, I can walk for miles and not even think about the fact that I am walking and I'm talking with nature, literally talking with nature, talking to the birds, talking to the plants, looking around, enjoying just everything that is in nature that says God is here, he's present and he's showing us how beautiful and how wonderfully made we are and everything else is that is in nature that God has created. Do you like to go to the park often? Why? I love to go to the park uh, because it's one, a way of relaxing, but two, again, a way of being in nature and one with nature and just looking at the way that the seasons change over time and it's so evident in the park you know, during the winter months where the trees are, you know, leafless, uh, but they're still there in a beautiful way, shape and form that says praise be to God with their branches, you know, leading up to the sky. How everything changes in the spring and the flowers come out and the birds are out and all the new animals are born and so on. And in the summer when everything is in full bloom, it's just a beautiful thing to go walking in the park and I enjoy it. What improvement do you want to make with the school? Oh, if I had the money or knew someone who had the money, I would level this school to the ground and rebuild it, purpose built, a school that is deserving of the kind of children and staff that we have here at St. Anthony's, a school that the children would have all the facilities that they needed and would use to help them to flourish and develop, uh, a school that would have all the areas for our little ones to have their learning both inside and outside, a school that had the sporting facilities that we would want to have to make sure that our children could progress and really develop their talents and skills, having a music room, having a dance studio, having a big enough hall to host parents and children for fabulous shows and programs, having state-of-the-art classrooms with all the facilities that our children could use to become the best that they can be. That's the kind of improvement that I would want to do with the school and to have staff and children and parents who are just working together and really, really happy. We have some of that already, 
staff, children and parents working so beautifully together. But I would love to have the facility to go with it. Did you know that St. Anthony's is 160 years this year? And so the best birthday gift that we could ever have for the school would be if we could get the funding to do a rebuild. How do you ensure that the school dinners are healthy and cater for everybody? We work with a company called Olive Dining and they are our caterers for our school and all of the schools in Olog, the map that we belong to, and they are brilliant at presenting the kind of balance and wide range of choices of food for our children. Every single day I meet with our chef, Césaire, and she produces such a beautiful range of choices of foods for our children to choose from, including all the three Gs that I spoke about before. So it is something that is well thought through. It is agreed. It is presented in a way that makes it so appealing to the children and the staff. How has your Christian faith helped you on your physical journey? To be honest, without my Christian faith, Jaden, I don't think that I would have been able to do this job. Because being a head teacher is a really challenging job. And having people who help and support you when you're doing that job, my deputy head, my assistant head, my SENCO, my EYFS lead, all of the staff that work across the school, my admin team, my site team, my governors who are so supportive. That is such a marvelous thing to have. And it is a great, great kind of partnership that we have in the school that makes the running of the school. Though it's so challenging, so much more easy to do. And without that kind of collaboration, it wouldn't have been, and it wouldn't be, the success that it has been today. Thank you for your life experience. Thank you for your wonderful talents and skills. This is what St. Anthony's is all about. Having a child who's going to come to me during their school holidays to say, Mrs. Moore, I have a special project. Would you be willing to be interviewed? And coming in with all of your equipment. I'm so impressed, Jaden. It was lovely talking with you. Thank you. Hi campus, welcome or welcome back to Mindful Minute with me, Abby. Now, as you may know, any good fisherman knows it takes quality lure to catch the big fish. Whether they use worms, insects or lures, fishermen apply their knowledge of fish to select the right bait to catch the fish that they want. Churches, as well as fishermen, are looking to draw people in the same way. And these days, churches, as well as well-meaning Christians, try a lot of things to bring people in. They may try parties, concerts, games, prizes, music, and free food. I mean, who wouldn't turn down free food? I definitely know I wouldn't. All these things can be lures to attract someone to church. But if all we ever do is get them inside the doors we have not done what Jesus would like us to do. Jesus wants people to come to him so that he can love them. Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins not so that he could give everyone pizza. Mm, pizza that sounds delicious right now. We can use all of the cool gimmicks and fancy tricks we can think of to try and draw people in, but it doesn't mean anything if we aren't sharing the love of Jesus. Love can mean being a friend to the new kid in school. It can mean going the extra mile to help a kid in need. It means standing up for the weak or answering a bully with kindness. Love isn't always easy, as you can probably guess from these suggestions. And love is the key to winning people for Jesus. Jesus was with the disciples in person during his life on earth. But after Jesus died and rose again, he went back to heaven. Now Jesus is counting on his church, on us, to do the work he began through the disciples. 
So will you be a fisher of men? Will you commit to loving the unlovely and bringing them to Jesus? He's waiting on you and he is counting on you to say yes. Now let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sharing the good news of Jesus with us. Teach us how we can share the good news with other people. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, it's bye from me, Abby. Goodbye.